This is a 2020 Honda Ridgeline. This is the RTLE trim, and it is an all-wheel drive. Today, we're going to review it. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a Ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Hey Rob, today we're taking a look at this beautiful Honda Ridgeline. It's a 2020 and it is the uh, RT, uh, RTLE trim level. That's right. But say, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to operate all the technology that's built inside, plus you like cool collector car stories, take a moment and hit that subscribe button down below. Ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So, what do you say, Nate? All right. Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Oh, yeah. All right. Taking a ride. <laughs> you know, I got to say, uh, yeah, I'm a little biased. This is my favorite vehicle. We've, we've test driven 200, 300. I don't know. Uh, I still come back to this, Nathan. Yeah, I love it. I never would have guessed. <laughs> Interior sound and quietness, we could talk about that, and we could talk about it pretty quietly because it is a very quiet cabin. Uh, even on the highway, uh, it's very comfortable as well. Not a lot of outside wind noise or tire noise, and it's, it's, it's really, really nice and comfortable to drive in, and you don't have a lot of that uh, protruding noise coming in. That's really cool. Um, acceleration, I'm in town right now. We're driving through some neighborhoods. I'm not going to punch it. I did on the highway getting uh, the on-ramp. And boy, yeah, I love it. It's got the V6 in it. I absolutely love it. I have a similar V6 in my uh, Acura MDX that I have. Um, and it just, it sounds so nice, too, when you, when you get into it. It's just got a nice growl to it. Uh, interior fit and finish, absolutely gorgeous. A lot of nice soft touch areas, beautiful. Uh, the one thing I am not a fan of, and I think we've said this in many videos before, Honda uses a lot of this piano black, this super shiny stuff uh, for their trim. And the bad thing is, is that it's around places that are high use. If it was like just trim on the doors or trim on the dash, it's not a big deal. But this is all around the cup holders and the gear selector. You know that's going to get scratched up pretty quickly, and it's going to look really bad in just a year or two. And I, I absolutely hate that part. I don't know why they wouldn't go to like a matte black finish. But other than that, it's all screwed together and put together extremely well. Uh, nice, again, soft-touch plastics uh, and cushioned areas that your arms and your, your hands touch and go to typically. You know, safety features. You know, my favorite has got the... Uh, Lane keeping assist is not my favorite, but my favorite is the adaptive cruise control. Uh, and you've got ABS, you've got sensors front and rear, you've got lane keeping, like I said, uh, you name it. I can't even think of all of them off the top of my head. There's so many. Uh, but Nathan will cover some of those. I'll cover those in my exterior review, and Nathan will cover those too when he goes over some of those functions on the tour of the inside. How is it back there, Nate? You know, back here it's very comfortable. All right, so I'm going to let Nathan uh, take the wheel. All right, my turn. So, uh, I had, you know, had a little chance to ride while Rob was driving. The back seats were comfortable. Um, really no adjustments, like tilt back, for, uh, back and forth or uh, move it forward or backwards. Uh, but they are nicely pre-adjusted. So they were very, they were comfortable. And it's stadium seating. I'm higher. That's right. My, my view line, my line of view is right over the top of this headrest. So that's really kind of cool, too. So you don't feel so claustrophobic back yep, here. Yeah, that, that is a nice feature. Um, but very, very spacious. Very spacious. The um, new on the 2020 yeah, are some larger opening rear doors. So you got a little more room there to fit things in, which is, which is nice. Now, in terms of getting in and out of the vehicle, it's, you know, it's nice. It's, it's not so high that you, that it's hard to get in. Right. And it's not so low that you feel like you're going to fall down when you're getting in. In terms of um, where everything's laid out, but the buttons of the steering wheel are, are spaced apart. More so, I think, than I've ever seen them. 
And so it, it while it's quite a stretch to get your thumb up and down, it is nice that the buttons are cleanly separated from each other so there's no mistaking, you know, what you're doing once you get the feel of it. And I, I, I like that. Voice command takes care of most anything you need. But should you feel the need to reach, then you do have a touch screen, which is all touch screen. Okay? You do have a physical volume on the steering wheel, and you can control other aspects from the steering wheel as well. Okay, in, in terms of parking, uh, obviously this is a big vehicle, but it does have front and rear parking sensors, and it does have a multi-angled rear view camera. So it's about as easy as you can get on a pickup. So, next up is going to be Rob's exterior review, then my interior review, and then on this car, we're going to cut a separate how-to video on the driver's information center and the infotainment center. Keep watching. This Honda Ridgeline is available in four trim levels, the Sport starting at 30, 33900 the RTL at 36670 the RTLE starts at 42,020. And then of course there is the black edition that starts at 43,520. This is the 2020 Honda Ridgeline. And this is the RTLE. And this one prices just over $43,000. Now it is presented here in a new color for this year, which is Pacific Pewter. And it does have a charcoal leather interior. It is powered by a 3.5 liter 24 valve single overhead cam B6 with direct fuel injection and variable cylinder management producing 280 horsepower and 262 foot pound of torque. There is also a high capacity radiator with high powered fans. Now it is driven by a nine speed automatic transmission with shift by wire and paddle shifters and it also does have all-wheel drive. Plus, it does have a heavy-duty transmission cooler. I really like that for the longevity of the vehicle. Now, out front, you do have daytime running lights, and you have LED low-beam headlights with auto-on-off feature. I like the uh, matte black grille, and of course, the chrome uh, horizontal bars as well. I like that with the Honda badging in the middle. And then you also have the body colored bumpers with parking sensors. And it does have a black bumper rub strip as well uh, and a matte silver lower balance. You also see the fog lights. It does have a, an, acoustic, an acoustic windshield and variable intermittent windshield wipers. Let's take a look along the side. Okay, this is unibody construction. So it's not a body on frame like most uh, pickup trucks are. It does have electric power assist rack and pinion steering, and it does have the exclusive 18 inch gray painted alloy wheels, and they are wrapped in P24560R18 105H all season tires. Up front, it is a uh, independent McPherson strut front suspension, and it has a 25 millimeter solid stabilizer bar. Out back, it has a multi link rear suspension with a 26.5 millimeter tubular stabilizer bar. Now, of course, it is four wheel anti-lock brakes with 12.6 inch front rotors. They are vented and solid 13 inch rear rotors. Now, up here we have the body colored heated power adjustable outside mirrors, but if you'll notice, they do not have the integrated turn signal indicators. I don't know why that is, possibly because it's a truck, it doesn't need the side repeater, I'm not sure. You'll see it does have the chrome door handles with the one touch lock and unlock, and it does have the uh, walk away auto lock as well. This does have the chrome belt line trim as well as the chrome window trim, and you can see it does have the rear privacy glass. There's also heavy duty matte black trim around the wheel wells and the rocker panel to keep from scuffs and rock chips and things like that. I really do like that. Most vehicles are coming that way nowadays. So let's take a walk around the back and see the exciting part about this truck. Okay, so here we go. It does have the dual action tailgate. So it's uh, up, down, and it also opens this way. And it does have a lockable in-bed trunk as well and it does have a uh, in-bed truck audio systems 
LED truck bed lights, eight heavy duty truck tie down cleats rated at 350 pounds each. And it is a 150, 400 watt uh, truck bed power outlet included inside as well. It does have LED tail lights, power sliding rear window, multi-view rear camera. It has parking sensors, has an integrated class three uh, trailer hitch with a seven pin connector, and it has single stainless steel exhaust. I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna take a look inside at the cargo area and we'll talk about measurements there. Okay, so the cargo bed volume is 33.9 cubic feet. And then the in bed truck volume right here is 7.3 cubic feet. Now, the bed length with the tailgate up is 64 inches. The bed length with the tailgate laid down gives you 83 inches from front wall to the end of the tailgate. Truck bed width at the wheel wells here is 50 inches. At the D pillars, it's 51 inches. And at the bed walls, you have 60 inches of width. You also then have 16.7 inches of bed height and the tailgate to the ground height is 35 inches. So you have a 35 inch lift up and over into the, uh, to, to the bed. Now total payload capacity is 1,499 pounds. Some of the safety features on this ridge line are collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, lane keeping assist system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning. You then have a blind spot information system and it does have cross traffic alert monitor. I, I really like that because you're backing out and really it tells you if someone's coming along the side. Uh, but it also does have uh, vehicle stability assist with traction control. It also has, as I mentioned before, anti-lock braking uh, system and it does have the electronic brake distribution as well as advanced front airbags, smart vent front side airbags, and loads, loads more of safety tech. So let's talk about the dimensions. Front track is 66.1 inches, rear track 66 inches. Total width 78.6 inches, overall length 210 inches, and it rides on a wheelbase of 125.2 inches. Its height is 70.8 inches, it has a fuel capacity of 19.5 gallons, curb weight 4,515 pounds, and it has a gross combined weight rating of 9,986 pounds. Its weight distribution 57.6 up front, 42.4 out back, ground clearance 7.87 inches, approach angle 21, or excuse me, 20.1 degrees, departure 22.1 degrees, and its breakover, which is similar to ground clearance, 19.6 degrees. It does have a turning diameter, 44.4 feet, and it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Now, on our spade scale, safety, safety is always first. So it has a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration five stars overall rating. Overall front barrier crash rating is five out of five. Overall side crash rating is five out of five. Rollover rating, four out of five. And it is an IIHS top safety pick. Now performance, 60 to zero in 6.9 seconds, quarter mile run in 15.2 seconds at 93 miles per hour, and 70 to zero in 195 feet. Appearance, crisp character lines with slightly flared fenders and blacked out grill and swept back headlights give this truck a semi SUV vibe, but the bed out back lets you know what its true purpose really is. Okay, dependability. Well. Besides the fact that it's a Honda, it does have a basic warranty of three years, 36,000 miles. It has a drivetrain warranty of five years, 60,000 miles, and it has roadside assistance of 36,000 miles. Now, finally, let's talk about economy. Fuel mileage city is 19, highway is 24, with a combined of 21 miles to gallon. Uh, that's not bad at all. So. In summary, you know, the ridge line can behave very much like a car when you want it to, or act very much like a truck when you need it to. 
Though the Ridgeline can't tow as much as other mid-sized trucks with body-on-frame construction, this Ridgeline is rated at 5,000 pounds. And that punchy V6 packs solid low-end torque that will wind eagerly to 600, or excuse, 6,500 RPMs. The Ridgeline is more inclined towards refinement and basically built for city roads and would be an excellent truck for a weekend excursion with your family or friends. Now, its overall looks are similar to the Pilot and Passport SUVs, and it does have car-like driving manners, but the Ridgeline can match any mid-sized truck for total utility, and that definitely qualifies it as a truck. Now let's take a look inside. Nathan's gonna give us a tour, but before we do, take a moment, give us a like, and click on that subscribe button down below. So what do you say, Nate? Take it away. And stepping inside, I like the, uh, the, the, the multiple levels here on the door. You got the armrest, you've got a storage here, a bottle holder here, and then of course down here, some extra storage. Now on top here, you've got auto up and down uh, front windows, uh, regular power windows for the rear. You got your window lockout and then your lock on lock buttons. And you do have a two person memory setting for the driver's seat, okay? as well as your fuel release button. Coming down to the driver's seat here, you have a 10-way power seat here uh, with lumbar, and then you have a four-way power on the passenger seat. Now, over down over here, you do have a manual uh, foot-activated parking brake, and then you have your trunk release right here. Okay, uh, coming up here, you have a few buttons uh, right here. You've got your parking sensors on or off here. You have your traction control here, cargo light here. This button powers the 115 volt outlet in the back of the bed. That can turn into 150 watt or a 400 watt, depending on how you want it set. Okay, coming over here, you've got your lane mitigation on or off, and then you have your forward collision braking mitigation on or off. Okay, right above that, you have got your mirror controls here, well, along with your left and right selector, and then an the econ button you can push if you want to drive more economically. This is a tilt and telescoping uh, steering wheel, and it is a manual lever right here. All right, let's hop inside and take a look. Okay, it is a push start. In the middle here, you have the driver's information screen along with your digital speedometer at the top. On the left, you have an analog tack. And on the far right, you have a fuel gauge at the bottom, and then you have an engine temperature gauge. And up there is your digital speedometer. That always stays there. So over on the left side of the steering wheel, basically you have your media controls. This is volume up and down. Left and right will change channels and skip back and forth between uh, radio stations or tracks on, on a something else. You have a source button in the middle. You have a display button that when you press it, it actually changes what is displayed on the infotainment screen. You can get a little glimpse of it here. Down here is the menu button. Once you're in a particular source, you can press the menu button and it will bring up the menu for that source. Down below here, you have your phone on button, your phone off button or back button. And then you have underneath that, your voice command. Control here, this does have uh, fully adaptive cruise control. Uh, so you have your, uh, um, you t this is your main button. This turns on your cruise control. It also turns on your lane keeping assist. And then you've got your set, resume, cancel, and then your gap setter right here. I like it how the screen kind of divides a little bit and, and gives you that graphic. If you turn on the lane keeping assist guidelines, then you actually have the guidelines that show up there too, which is nice. All right, uh, down here are the only two buttons that you have to control the driver's information screen and change information along with the reset button. Okay? And they, they basically just go through and they give you different screens. Okay. The information on there is, the only thing you can really change is to reset it. All right, that being said, we'll move over to the infotainment screen over here. Um, oh, before I do that, your dashboard brightness dimness switches are right here. 
Okay, moving over to the infotainment screen. This is uh, an 8-inch screen. It has um, eight speakers and it is 540 watts. It does Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, XM Radio, and um, then of course, AM and FM Radio. So. All the buttons on here are touchscreen. I do wish, again, they put a physical power and volume button right here. Now, you do have a volume button on the steering wheel, though. So for the driver, it's quite easy. But basically, you have your audio on or off, your home button, okay? You do have a sliding volume thing, so you can put your finger on there and you can slide. But once you get above the plus sign, it doesn't work anymore, so you can't keep sliding it. So it's continually doing this. That's why using the steering wheel control is easier. You do have a menu button right here, but that will only work once you're inside of an app. So if, uh, for instance, if I go to audio and I'm in, um, this is uh, satellite radio, and I press the menu button, now I get something to show up. Hey, this is your back button. This, of course, is your brightness or dimness for the infotainment screen. If I press it once, I can adjust it manually by clicking the plus or minus. If I click it again, it gives me like a nighttime uh, view. And if I press it again, it'll shut off the screen altogether. But everything is still functioning. It's just that the, the, the light is gone. Press it again, and it all comes back. Oh. Um, the climate control system is all physical and it's all located here. There's nothing in the touch screen. And, and I know there's more dots here and typically mean, that means there's more things, but all there is, if I click here, you do have a little app button. Now, this is for like widgets that you download and put on the car, like a calculator or a internet browser, that kind of stuff, okay? But back here, as you can see, there's nothing else. Okay, so down here, this is a tri-zone climate control. However, there are no controller buttons in the rear for the back passengers. That's all done from here. So you have the driver's uh, temperature control here, passenger control here, and the rear is right here. So if I turn on, click on rear settings, you notice the other two disappear and it's just rear. Now I can use either button to raise or lower. And I can use the fan button right here, okay? And I can use the mode button and all that kind of stuff to control just the rear. And then I can click out of there and now it controls the front again. Or you can turn the rear fan off or on, okay? And then of course you have auto, you can turn the whole system on or off, and then your uh, mirror defroster as well as your back window defroster and your front defroster, okay? So um, I do like it that they have a physical sync button. Um, I, just, I just think it's interesting that all the controls are here and not up here, which is just fine. Um, I like it that they're physical push buttons and not like touch buttons. Moving on down a little bit, both front seats, uh, which are leather by the way, have a three stage heat. Uh, you have a little storage right down here. There is no wireless phone charger in here, which I wish they would have, um, but you do have a nice storage area down here. It's a rubberized mat so things won't slide. Okay, Over here you have a 12 volt outlet. And that is uh, next to your USB connection for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, right down in there. It also charge your phone. Hey, then you have a nice uh, two cup holders here with a pass through. And then of course, not my favorite thing, but you do have the push button transmission. Reverse, of course, is a pull. Okay, and then DS stands for drive and or sport. Okay, and it does have paddle shifters on the wheel if you, if you wanna do that. Now this button down here is your um, auto defeat button. So the auto start stop defeat. And then this one selects your, your different modes. So if I click it once, it shows up on the driver's information screen. That's normal traction, snow, mud, and sand. And all you do is go to one and leave it. Don't touch it anymore. And now it's in sand mode. Okay, obviously I don't wanna leave it in sand mode here. So we'll go back to normal. But that's where that shows up. Okay, this is the center console storage, and unlike other vehicles where that piece is really high, they actually give you adjustable armrests on the seats, which is interesting. So they're ratcheted. So like right now, it's kind of stuck there. So I have to go back and come forward again and then lift it up to my uh, desired height. But I do like that. 
because then you can adjust it to to your particular um, arm length and size. Okay, the there is a, quite a bit of storage down here, so your smartphone will fit into that tray if you want. It also fits really nicely right up there. Slideable storage tray here. Uh, down here below, you do have another 12 volt outlet and you do have another USB charging port. What you do have is a fairly large storage area right here. I mean, that's gotta be uh, close to eight inches deep and almost a foot long. So lots and lots of storage there. All right, moving on over to the glove compartment. If I open that up, you've got ample storage in here. It's, it's a hard plastic, there's no felt line or anything, but you got lots and lots of storage. Moving up to the mirror, this is an auto dimming rear view mirror. And then up here, you've got your sunglass holder as well as a conversation mirror. You got your three home link buttons for your garage doors. You have LED lights, of course, reading lights on either side. And then this does have a, a sunroof. So the shade is manual, but then you can open or close it with this button here. And then it has a powered rear sliding window, and that's just right here, okay? The sun visors are backlit uh, and telescoping on both sides. All right, that being said, let's step into the back and take a look. All right, so stepping into the back of the Ridgeline, uh, one of the things I like is next to the cup holder right here, you've got like a cell phone holder. I, I like that. Uh, you got your window, uh, power window switch. You've got uh, one of your speakers right here. And then um, you got two seat back pockets right here. You got a, a tiny little storage area. I'm not really sure what you would store in there because it is at a, slanted at an angle at the bottom, but there's no uh, edge on it. So it might fall out easily. Down here, you've got two USB charging ports. So the other thing that's really nice about this is that you've got a really easily foldable seat. So there is a little lever on the side. If you just pull that, the seat comes up fairly easily and locks in place. So it's not like a big heavy seat. Um, I did that just with one hand and, and, and it's fairly light. Uh, and then these legs, of course, go down into the track, which leaves you with a fairly flat floor, of course, except for this track. Uh, but you could fit a lot of stuff in here. Now, the one thing that's that's uh, new in the back here on the 2020 is the is that the rear doors open at a greater angle, allowing you to put things in, like say uh, a kennel of something. It's much easier to fit it in now. Hey, then to put the seat back down again, you just simply pull the lever until you hear the click. Okay, so the front seat is right where I left it. I have a good inch and a half, really close to almost two inches of space there, okay? Uh, headroom wise, I've got even more. I've got uh, two, two and a half inches. Hey, but as long as it's not touching your hair or the top of your hat, it's gonna be great, okay? The uh, seats themselves are pretty comfortable. The one thing we noticed on the right is that these are stadium seating. So you are up higher than the front driver and passenger, which gives you a nicer view over the headrest. Okay, which makes for much more pleasant driving. Now the armrest, I like for two reasons. One is that it's elevated, I like that. But two, it's wide. So I have got a proper armrest for my arm, the passenger has one for them, and then you still have the cup holders in between. And then you do have a little extra storage right here. Um, now the other thing that we've noticed is that, you know, this is a five, it's rated to, to seat five. And sometimes when we, when we see that, the fifth person is really squished. In this particular setup, I mean, you can see where I am sitting. I'm not, you know, I we would, would probably be touching knees, but the third person would have, you know, quite a bit of space and I think would fit fairly comfortably. So, you know, overall, just really roomy back here. All right, thanks for watching. All right, so my favorite thing, even though I'm a techie guy, is the fact that the climate control system is all located here. It doesn't go up in the infotainment screen. There are no redundant things. It's all here and it's all push button. Okay, so my favorite thing, couple of things that all has to do with the back, the, the uh, trunk, uh, the truck part. It's this part of the easy swing open tailgate and it's the in bed trunk right there. 
That's phenomenal. Absolutely love it. And that is my favorite thing.